Florida Gator football fans have been pretty pessimistic about this upcoming season, but ESPN just did something this week that should turn some of that around and maybe give fans some hope for the upcoming football season. Today I'm going to talk about it and tell you something that you may not have realized in today's video. Let's jump right into it. ESPN released their FPI, which is their football power index this week, and has UF a lot higher than some folks maybe would have expected. They currently have the Gators going eight and four against the toughest schedule in the country. Let's look at what they're projecting this season and then we'll dive into what that means. Okay, so ESPN is predicting losses at Utah, LSU, Georgia, and Kentucky. They are giving Florida close wins against Tennessee, South Carolina, FSU, and Missouri. And then they're giving Gators solid wins against McNeese, Charlotte, Vandy, and Arkansas. Now, obviously a close win and a solid win are both a win, right? So that is how they have Florida getting to eight and four. So we can take a look at Florida's percentage of winning per ESPN against their opponents. Against Utah, which obviously is the first game of the season, they head out to Salt Lake for a Thursday night game. They open the entire college football season. All eyes will be on the Gators. Well, ESPN says that Florida only has a 29.7% chance of winning that game. I really hope that Billy Napier is going to take a play out of like Urban Meyer's playbook where he takes that number and he hangs it all over the locker room. Every article he could possibly find that says that Florida has almost no chance against Utah, that he is going to just let them see it all summer long, use it as motivation. The next game of the season is McNeese, and ESPN gives Florida a 99% chance of winning that football game. I think that that is an incredibly accurate number. I think it'll be a great way to early on let some guys who don't have a whole lot of game experience get some reps. There's no reason that Florida should struggle in this game. It'll be a typical beginning of the season football game, 99% chance of winning. You got to you gotta leave it at 99% because... That's why they play the game, right? Things happen. But I totally agree with ESPN here. They will beat McNeese State. Now, kind of interesting, the third week of the year, Florida plays Tennessee, which last season Tennessee trended in the right direction the entire year. By the end of the year, they really were a, a force to be reckoned with, essentially. This gives Florida a 51.7% chance of winning that football game. That makes it obviously just a tick higher than a coin flip. Um, I think that this is pretty accurate. I think that Florida wants that Tennessee game really badly. I think it'll be one that is incredibly hyped up. I think that Florida is going to have the opportunity to win it, but I do agree that it'll be close. Next, Florida plays Charlotte. They're given a 96.3% chance of winning. I'd say that that's pretty accurate. Um, it's going to be another tune-up game before Florida heads into what is really considered like the meat of the schedule. From there, they go to Kentucky. Now, Florida has a 48.4% chance of winning that. Now, let me tell you why I think that is actually pretty positive. I do think Florida can beat Kentucky. I think Florida should have beaten Kentucky last year. I think that this is a situation where 48.4, that's essentially a coin flip. So if the Gators play their cards right, things fall the way, you know, favor the Gators a little bit, there's a possibility that Florida can actually pick up an additional win here. Florida having a 48.4% chance of winning is not, uh, you know, that it's really not much different than a coin flip. So I do think the Gators, as long as they're in this game, have a great opportunity to actually pick up an additional win from the eight that ESPN is predicting. Then they play Vanderbilt. I don't know that I agree with ESPN that Florida has a 90.4% chance to beat Vanderbilt because Vanderbilt figures out a way to get things done against the Gators. They seem to have some of their best games against Florida. Florida seems to struggle for some reason. So, I mean, that's pretty confident on ESPN's part, and I will absolutely take it. But I don't think the Gators should take the Commodores for granted because we've seen what has happened when that's been done in the past. Next, they travel to South Carolina. Columbia's a... a tense place to play. The Gamecocks are really moving in the right direction. So this ESPN gives Florida a 58.9% chance of winning. I do think Florida can beat South Carolina, but I also agree that this game is going to be tight. It's going to be close. Florida has to play mistake-free football. It's going to be a crazy environment. So it'll be an interesting test for Billy Napier. 
Next, Florida heads to Jacksonville where they play Georgia and ESPN gives Florida only a 13.8% chance of winning. I don't know that I think it's that low, but Florida's more than likely not winning this football game. Georgia's the reigning national champion. They return a ton of guys. They are incredibly loaded and I just don't see a way where Florida wins this game. Now, could my opinion change on that as the season progresses? Absolutely. And obviously, I will always be rooting for a Gator victory. But I think if you're being honest with yourself, the odds that Florida beats Georgia are not large. But after that, they come back to Gainesville and they play Arkansas. And ESPN gives them a 66.2% chance of winning that football game. And I do think that that is very, very likely. After that, they head to Baton Rouge, in my opinion, the most difficult place to play in the SEC. ESPN only gives Florida an 18.5% chance of winning. I don't know that I think it's that low. I think that LSU gets the nod for environment. I think that LSU really seemed to put things together faster than Florida did last year under a brand new uh, coaching regime. And I do think that LSU had more weapons than Florida um, when the coaching turnovers at both programs happened. But I don't know that I think that Florida only has an 18.5% chance of winning. So, you know, again, my opinion on that could change throughout the year, but I, Florida tends to get into dogfights with LSU, and I don't really see this season turning out any differently than once in years past. Then Florida travels to Missouri. They have a 58.1% chance of winning this game. Missouri in late November is freezing cold, and Florida has typically not played well there. A lot of times those games are 11 a.m. games. It's incredibly early. So this is one that I think could really be a trap game for Florida. I think that they need to stay on their toes, mind their P's and Q's, play mistake-free football, because Missouri is one that has had Florida's number in the past, and especially when they travel there. And then end of the season, Florida State, 50.3% chance of winning according to ESPN. So essentially, that's a coin flip. And I think Florida, Florida State is a coin flip pretty much every single year. I think you throw the records out the window. I think that the preseason hype means nothing. I think that these are two of the biggest rivals that generally play each other close no matter what. So I think this is probably a pretty good position uh, for ESPN to be in right there. It's a coin toss, right? I think that this game, it could potentially go either way. So, you know, listen, I think all in all, that just says fans really need to calm down. The sky is not falling. You need to trust Billy Napier's process. He has a plan in place. Things are trending in the right direction. Florida has a very talented uh, roster. They have incredible running backs. They've got some really good wide receivers. There is O-line depth that we haven't seen before. The defense looks like it's improving. It's trending in the right direction. And, you know, Billy Napier talked a little bit about Graham Mertz this past week, and he said something that was really, really interesting. We've talked lots on this channel about how we really only need Graham Mertz to be a game manager. Billy Napier seems to have a lot more confidence in him than Gator fans do at this moment, and it may be due to the fact that Mertz has started 32 football games in his college career, which is more than all but five quarterbacks in all of college football. So that just goes to show that he is incredibly seasoned. Hopefully that means that with that experience comes somebody that's gonna be calm on the football field, someone that's gonna make good decisions, somebody that's gonna be a really good game, management, game manager of an otherwise really talented offensive roster. I think it is really important for Florida to get a good start to the season. If they beat Utah out the gate, that sets a really great trend for Florida because then there's a couple easy games that happen early in the season and if you could build some momentum with those easier games it does make some of those tougher games win or lose easier to swallow as the season goes on and I do think that a good start is also really important for recruiting. Florida needs a great recruiting class for Billy Napier's plan to continue to be built in the direction that he wants to take it. He can't lose guys from the 2024 class. If they come out the gate and they lose several games in a row, there is a possibility that Florida will lose recruits. But if they can figure out a way to come out and beat Utah, if they can then beat Tennessee, beat Kentucky, they will really be trending in the right direction. And I don't think recruits will care if Florida then drops a game to Georgia or LSU or some of the bigger ball games that they have later on down the stretch because they will have shown improvement, their record won't be a losing one, and it'll just be easier, I think, for fans to continue the buy-in and for recruits to continue the buy-in. So what will UF do on the field this year? 
I think a lot of it's going to come down to what they do in games that are close to the 50-50 ball games. I'm not going to sell them short in games like Utah where ESPN has Florida losing because I do think Florida has a shot to win those. But in multiple coin toss games last season, Florida did not win. If they can turn the corner this year and in those games first win all the games that they are supposed to win, the Charlottes, the McNeese's, Missouri, things like that. But then when they move into those toss-up games, walk away with some victories, that is going to be major progress for this team. I think it's entirely possible. I do think 8-4 and four may be on the lofty side, but I could see a 7-5. and 8-4 and four is absolutely possible. So Gator fans, the sky is not falling, all right? We're going to do content around our expectations for this season uh, coming up in the, in the next few weeks, so make sure that you are locked in with the channel so that you don't miss them. And if you missed our video on how many five stars the U.S. could potentially land this cycle, click right here.